I'm a former prosecutor, and you wouldn't do a plea agreement with someone as big as Michael Flynn in order to get information on lower-level individuals. You do that plea agreement because Michael Flynn has damning information on people above him. There's only a handful of people, Jared Kushner, Mike Pence, Jeff Sessions, Donald Trump Jr., or the President of the United States. Do you have any sense as to whether Mike Flynn has given Robert Mueller's team all of the information they need to know, or is that something that would come later, given your experience in, in situations like this in prosecution? Michael Flynn's lawyer would have made a proffer of what Michael Flynn would say. And Special Counsel Mueller knows what that is, and that's why he agreed to this very light charge of just one count. And he's also sending a signal to others. He gave a very light one count charge to George Papadopoulos because he's also cooperating with the special counsel. But when Paul Manafort said he's not going to, then Robert Mueller threw the book at him. So he's sending a very strong signal to others that you better cooperate or you're going to go to prison for a very long time. You're making a very good point there because uh, Papadopoulos, I mean, it very quietly happened with him with both Manafort. I mean, he was dragged out of his house early in the morning in the wee hours. And so that was a very public reckoning right there. What about your reaction to Trump's personal lawyer, to John Dowd, who's apparently backpedaling on what he meant when he allegedly tweeted that, that Trump fired Flynn for lying to the FBI? You tweeted, tweeted about all this. I was talking about this tweet yesterday from you, and it said, this is obstruction of justice. POTUS now admits he knew Michael Flynn lied to the FBI, yet Trump tried to influence or stop the FBI investigation on Flynn. So I take it you're not buying this explanation? Uh, not at all. And if John Dowd actually wrote that tweet, he should be fired. It's stunning legal malpractice. But it doesn't really matter, because if a lawyer writes something for you, and then you say it or you uh, put it out, then you've just owned it. So it doesn't even absolve Donald Trump uh, of that tweet. And more significantly, Donald Trump has not tried to correct it. He's had numerous occasions now to say he didn't mean it or someone else wrote it. He didn't say that. In fact, he doubled down. And he's now attacking the FBI instead of trying to correct his earlier tweet. So if, if he did, in fact, write it, though, John Dowd, why would he potentially put his client in legal jeopardy? Or is it more to what you said, you know, he should be fired, and that would be just a level of sloppiness or, or incompetence right. doing so? Because I just don't believe that story at all. I know the White House is very freaked out about Donald Tr Trump's tweet yesterday, but the president himself has not seeked to distance himself from it. He hasn't said someone else wrote it. He, in fact, is doubling down on it by attacking the FBI and by suggesting that General Flynn's life shouldn't be ruined just because he lied to the FBI. How do you think Robert Mueller is looking at all these tweets from yesterday and today? Well, let me first say the President of the United States is in serious trouble. He has now, on more than one occasion, admitted publicly to their essential elements of obstruction of justice. Special Counsel Mueller is also very interested in this issue based on the witnesses he's interviewing. They're very um, interested in why FBI Director Comey was fired. And this obstruction statute is very broad. You don't actually have to obstruct justice. You just have to endeavor to influence or impede an investigation. And the president certainly did that. Um I have something else I want to ask you about, and this is regarding the New York Times, which, as you know, obtained the emails from former NSA official KT McFarlane writing to a colleague right. about the Obama sanctions against Russia for the election meddling. How crucial is KT McFarlane going to be in this investigation at this point? I mean, has your committee reached out to her? I think she is also in trouble. And what's fascinating is you have emails that just straight up talk about the Kremlin connection about Russia, about um, the Russian government trying to help the Trump campaign. You saw another article in New York Times, uh, I think it was New York Times, on the NRA connection, where a, a lobbyist also wrote an email titled Kremlin Connection. So you've got a lot of evidence here where it's very publicly known within the Trump campaign folks that Russia is trying to help them, and they're coordinating with the Russians, and that's collusion. So there appears to be two tracks here. You can go down the legal track or you can go down the political track towards impeachment. Which one do you think uh, is the president, should the president be more concerned about? Which one do you think gets closer to him right now? 
Well, we know that for Richard Nixon, he was not brought down because of the underlying crimes. He was brought down for obstruction of justice. That was the first article of impeachment. The second article was dereliction of duty. And we're seeing that here today. We're seeing the President of the United States commit obstruction of justice in plain view. And I think we should let Special Counsel Mueller's investigation continue forward. He is getting closer uh, every day that goes by. And it may be a very easy decision for the American people in the months to come. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.